Hello everyone! In this video we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We're going to be looking at El Niño and La Niña, but we're going to be doing it in such a way that I'm showing first an interactive video, explaining the phenomena, and then on the second part I'll be including the explanation um, with my normal hand-drawn diagrams. Before I start explaining what occurs in normal conditions, if you look on the right-hand side of the map, we have South America and the United States and North America. And on the left-hand side of this map over here, we have Southeast Asia and Australia. So when I press play in normal conditions, what we're going to see is we're going to see what typically occurs in the Pacific Ocean. So if we look in the Pacific Ocean, you get um, high pressure that develops in South America and low pressure that develops off of the coast of Southeast Asia. And you can see that the trade winds move from the area of high pressure towards the area of low pressure. As this occurs, um, the low pressure area, the air rises, it condenses, it cools, and it causes a whole amount of precipitation that actually falls in this area. And as a cell completes and it moves around, the cooler air um, over the coast of South America sinks. And this causes this circular movement of air which we call the Walker cell. It is this cell that um, generates the normal weather and oceanic conditions that we have in the Pacific region. Now these trade winds that move from the coast of South America um, to the coast of Southeast Asia, what they do is they also drag water with it. And they tend to move this water um, and make the sea level even slightly higher in the Southeast Asian coast than it is in the uh, South American coast. Eventually what will occur is also it will cause this cold upwelling of water that you have um, on the South American coast that is fantastic for fish and is why the Chileans and the Peruvians are, have very large fishing industries. So normal conditions imply that you have the Walker cell, the trade winds are blowing from the coast of South America to the coast of Southeast Asia, the sea level is slightly higher in Southeast Asia than it is in South America, and you get this large body of warm pooling water in Southeast Asia and you get this cold body of water caused by upwelling and maybe the Peru current that is in South America. And these are the normal conditions that occur. Now what occurs in uh, El Nino conditions or in ELSO conditions is that the trade winds that are blowing from the coast of South America to the coast of Southeast Asia break down. They become less and less and weaker. And when eventually they do break down, as you can see over here, this cold, or the cold water and the warm water are no longer held in place by these surface currents. So the warm water tends to slosh back, it tends to move back towards the coast of South America. And um, with it, obviously, it brings all of the warmth that it had with it. And it pushes back this cold water, as you can see over there. And that upwelling that was going on begins to decline. The thermocline sinks back down um, to its normal previous levels. So as you can see over here, um, the now warm water has spread all the way across the Pacific Ocean and is now knocking on the doors of California and, you know, Chile and Peru. Now because of this change, even though you can see on this diagram that it appears to be quite warm in Southeast Asia, and uh, th this is not as warm as it would have been otherwise. So if you were to look at sea surface temperature maps, you would actually see a slight decline in temperature in that region. Now what occurs is that you have this w element that we call the oscillation or southern oscillation. It's why El Nino conditions are some uh, sometimes referred to as ENSO conditions. El Nino southern oscillation. So the Walker cell that previously existed under normal conditions completely broke down and as you can see from the high and the low pressure has now reversed. High pressure is found over the coast of Southeast Asia rather than the coast of South America. And what this causes is it causes um, the precipitation to occur and the low pressure to occur off the coast of South America and it causes the uh, high pressure and lack of rainfall to, coast, to occur sorry, off of the coast of uh, Southeast Asia. This therefore is going to cause a lot of flooding uh, in Peru and Chile and South America and potentially California and is also going to cause droughts and therefore possibly forest fires in the rainforest regions of Indonesia, um, Darwin, North Australia and places like that. So although El Nino is just a change of uh, atmospheric and also water conditions in the Pacific Ocean, the f it has far-reaching effects all across the planet 
and has been blamed for potentially causing um, hurricanes or droughts in other parts of the world too. Nor because of this shift in uh, or this oscillation in atmospheric conditions and a change in sea level temperatures as well. Finally, we have La Nina. Now, on this map over here, you can see that we have uh, normal conditions currently. Uh, La Nina is kind of like a pendulum. You go from normal conditions to El Nino, and after El Nino, it tends to swing back towards normal. But sometimes that swinging back as the pendulum does, it overshoots, and it becomes stronger than normal. And that's what La Nina is, is a stronger than normal conditions. Now, if I start this video, you can see this. So these are the normal conditions. And these trade winds actually become stronger and stronger and stronger. And as they become stronger, these tend to move the area of low pressure um, further towards uh, the, the land. And also, these surface currents become stronger because the wind is also becoming stronger. The upwelling of water becomes more intense. The cold water that you have off the coast of South America begins to spread and to push itself towards um, Southeast Asia. And typically what occurs is that the warm area becomes much warmer, you get a lot more precipitation, and the colder area becomes colder and you get um, potentially more drought occurring in that area. So, moving on to my hand-drawn diagram. These are normal conditions. You have uh, Southeast Asia, you have South America, and you have to draw the Pacific Ocean. You start with the Walker Cell. Uh, you have the low pressure forming over Southeast Asia, you have the high pressure forming over South America, and you obviously connect the two with the wind that is going to be blowing from high pressure to low pressure. That is going to cause the warm water um, to pool in Southeast Asia and the cold upwelling to occur in the South American coast. In uh, ENSO conditions, on the other hand, uh, the diagram is pretty much the same, other than the fact that you are going to be reversing the Walker cell. This is because the trade winds weaken and, um, obviously, like I said, the Walker cell reverses. Low pressure is off South America, it causes flooding. High pressure is off Southeast Asia, and it's going to cause the winds to obviously move now from the opposite direction, making warmer than normal conditions in South America and cooler than normal in Southeast Asia, and causing drought there. Thank you very much for watching and have a really great day.